Bow Weep, Ground Out Weep, Nitty Bong, everybody. I'm Engineer Hoist. Another year has passed, and you know what that means. It is time to count down the top bots that came into my collection over the past year. And yeah, that's what the criteria is. It's not what it didn't have to be released in 2018, but it came into my collection during 2018. In past years, we've done the whole Transformers top 18 of 2018, 17 of 17, but you know, it's, it's getting a little ridiculous. So we're shorting it down to just the top 10 this year and from these years forward. So we're gonna be doing top 10. And now that I've got that all explained, let's get to the list. But first up, a couple of honorable mentions. Straight out of the box, Volcanicus is a lanky, unstable combiners. But add a third-party add-on kit, this is the perfect effect kit, and some repro labels, and he is an imposing presence on the shelf. Even so, he mostly makes honorable mention on my list due to being my favorite combiner in the Transformers Earth Wars game. The next honorable mention is Mastermind Creations Magna. When he first came in, I was amazed at the weight of this figure. He's nearly as heavy as Titan's Return Fortress Maximus. I mean, there's just some serious heft to this figure. In addition, he's really great looking and fantastically posable. Now the only reason he didn't make it on this list is because he's really incomplete without the Inventa part, which is the shuttle bird mode. Even so, I really like the fact that they released him separately because when else are we going to be able to appreciate him in this Lynx mode because once that other part comes in, they're going to be combined and we'll never see this mode again. The Duocon Battle Trap was originally just two drone vehicles that combined into robot back in the days of G1, but for Power of the Primes, the components got their own robots mode, turning this guy into a legitimate combiner. It's not often that a big change like that is met with universal praise, but the Battle Slash and Road Trap combination into Battle Trap pulls it off, and it almost makes the release of his fellow Duocon Skytread aka flywheels in the siege line as just two drone vehicles a little bit disappointing whichever mode you choose to display your studio series blackout in he's going to be an imposing presence on your shelf in helicopter mode he's humongous there's no other single figure that even comes close to his size other than the titan class city bots in bot mode, he's a beefy chunk of robot that dwarfs any bot he stands next to. If not in height, then in heft. Throw in his Scorponok minion, and then he's the perfect representation of his appearance in the first live-action movie. The Bumblebee movie was an absolute joy to see, and I'm glad they made a masterpiece figure to go along with it. Like the other masterpiece figures, this guy has plenty of die-cast parts and looks great. He'd be higher on the list if there was a way to get his door wings to fold back like in the movie, and his transformation is a little more complicated for its own good. Still, he's an excellent figure, and I'm happy to have him. I had Metroplex many years ago as a kid, and it's the one figure from my childhood that I really regret losing track of and being lost to the ravages of time. Luckily, when I was visiting my buddy Gen 1 Red Alert at his comic shop, there was a complete, decent condition G1 Metroplex on the shelf, and I knew I had to take it home. Even though it had the original sticker sheet, I decided to grab some repro labels for it, because who knows how well 32-year-old stickers would actually stick to the figure. Reclaiming this lost part of my childhood warms my heart, and he will always hold a special place in my collection. After going two movie lines without a decent Grimlock figure, the Studio Series finally delivered. Finally, we got a leader class Grimlock that was in the colors that we saw in the movie with the proper proportions. And all of the weathering details that were added to him really make him feel like a premium toy. We got Power of the Prime's Rodimus Prime early in the year. It's a decent figure and the evolving gimmick is pretty fun. When I first saw pictures of Rodimus Unicronus, my first thought was, meh, I don't really need a black repaint of this guy. Then I saw him in the package on the shelf and I fell in love. Then when I got him home and started playing with him, he easily became one of my favorite figures. And the best part is, he wasn't just a black repaint. He actually had a representation in the fiction in a Prime Wars trilogy cartoon created by Machinima. 
Not only does this Golden Lagoon Optimus Prime, dubbed by those on my stream as Goldimus Prime, look great, but I was blown away by how tight and solid all of his joints are. Being the MP10 mold, I knew this was going to be a great looking figure and a wonderful presence on the shelf, but with so many releases in so many different colors, I was worried that he could have come in and been a floppy mess due to mold degradation. Happily, that was far from the case. If you're a fan of the Golden Lagoon episode from G1 like I am, this guy is a must-have. Barely making it onto the list by coming out late in the year is War for Cybertron Siege Sideswipe. I opened this live on one of my streams and I was blown away by how solid the figure felt and how intuitive the transformation was. This guy truly is a pleasure to play with and transform. The rest of the Deluxe Class figures from Wave 1 of the Siege line are excellent too, but Sideswipe is just on another level. I'm looking real forward to what the rest of the Siege line is going to deliver. Masterpiece Sunstreaker was one of the very first figures that came in this year and immediately went to the top of this list. As you can see, not much else came in to supplant it from that top spot. Many tried, but only one succeeded. He is absolutely beautiful and a perfect representation of him from the cartoon. And the fact that you can choose a normal Lamborghini mode or the souped up Lamborghini from the cartoon and the toy was just a feat of engineering genius. The inclusion of the alien mask to homage the Hoist Goes to Hollywood episode was just icing on the cake. Iron Factory continues to release fantastic figures and their war giant, aka Bruticus, is quite possibly the pinnacle of their greatness. I gave his leg components an honorable mention last year because I knew that this combined mode would, would make the list this year and I was right. Not only does this guy look great, but he's extremely solid and poseable. He is far and away the best combiner that I've ever had. I look forward to more small scale combiners from Iron Factory in the future, especially that DJD combiner. So there you have it. That was my top 10 figures plus a couple of honorable mentions from 2018. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. How many of these made your list? Do you have a list? Let me know in the comments. What were your favorite figures from 2018? Or make a video and go ahead and post it down below. I'm Engineer Hoist. Keep rolling, my friends. Thanks for watching.